I discovered through Father Nate, his talent as photographer. Fadi was born and raised in Lebanon, in Beirut, and never wanted to be a photographer. Growing up in a war-torn country, photos often were, and still are, the only remnant of many, many people who don't exist anymore. These people unwittingly became mythical, for each photo of them hits fantastical stories that only the others lived and told. It was magic. But magic disappeared with age, and a strictly scientific education, graduate degrees in engineering and business, and a corporate career wiped out most of what was left of it. It wasn't until he hit his 30s that he realized how much he needed photography, both as a therapy tool and as a way to discover oddities within the mundane. In 2013, he co-founded Observe Collective with 13 other photographers from around the world. His photos have been published in various media outlets such as CNN, Foreign Policy, and Career International. He has also exhibited both solo and collectively in the US, Germany, the UK, and of course in Lebanon. Uh, I give you the floor to tell us more about your experience as photographer. I've been a full-time photographer for just one year. I'm here today to talk to you guys and ladies about a trip I did last year in the U.S., which is I toured, this is a map of the United States, uh, just before I continue, show of hands, who's from the U.S.? A few people. So what I did is I did a road trip around the U.S. to discover all the towns that are called Lebanon. In the United States, there are 47 towns, villages, cities that are called Lebanon. So this was my road trip, and I'll explain about it. So at first, like Mr. Bustani said, uh, I originally was an engineer. I was born and raised in Lebanon. I studied engineering in Lebanon at the Lebanese University, computer and communications. Uh, I did uh, my military service, and then I worked in that for a little bit in Beirut and Dubai, and then I went to the United States, did my master's in finance, came back, worked in finance, and then in tax consulting. Very boring stuff. Anyway, in 2016, I quit my job, and I'll talk about it a little bit later, but I quit my job and I went to the US on a tourist visa. I'm not American, I'm just Lebanese, but just because I studied there, if you see, it's like this kind of like photo uh, shows what I did. One, there's the camera, I'm a photographer. Two, the Lebanese passport, because I'm Lebanese. And three, I have a California driver's license just because I lived in California for three years, four years. And this is the road trip that I did. The first slide showed a theoretical, like, uh, how to say, the theoretical map on where I wanted to go. But this is taken from Google Maps exactly what I did. So I started from San Francisco, just because I used to live in San Francisco and I went to school, so it's always kind of like the second home. And the trip I did around the US, going up north, all the way east, south, and then back. And I did a little tour over there. And all in all, it was 20, 28,000 kilometers, 17,000 miles, 37 states, 
So that distance would be as if I'm going the length of the coast of Lebanon 131 times. I did that in five months. Um, why did I do that? Here, like, why did I quit my job and did all of that? Here's the thing. In 2005, I was still working in Lebanon. And I used to work in Ain Lim Raisi. And on October, uh, February 14th was the day that the prime minister was assassinated. And as it happens, I, I was there. I wasn't at the exact location. I was just one street away, and I was in my office. And the explosion was so big that the glass window blew, blew up in my face. So at the time, because I was born and raised during the wartime in Lebanon, and I spent so much time uh, in bomb shelters, at that time, I, when the explosion happened, I said, that's it. Screw it. Excuse my French. It's like, I'm, I'm leaving. So I applied to the US and went to study my master's in finance just because I wanted to, to get out. But after that, after I finished my degree, I came back. And I worked and all that. Then in 2015, in December 2015, uh, I went to Baghdad. Because in my job in tax consultancy, uh, one of my clients was the central bank of Iraq. So I went there to Baghdad. When I went there, we weren't allowed to stay in a hotel because it's dangerous out there. So uh, we had to sleep in the company headquarters. And it was bunk beds. And right to my, next to my bed, there was a Kevlar vest. You know what a Kevlar vest is? The one that against the bullets. And there was a, a helmet. And then we had to take armored cars with bodyguards and who had, had AK-47s. We had to be searched every, I don't know, maybe one kilometer because apparently someone tried to blow themselves up the day before. So with all that, it became like there was a flashback as to, it's like, to the, day, how to say, the days of war. And I said, again, you know what? I'm done with this. I'm done with this. How, how to say, it's like, I'm doing taxes, right? You know, taxes, that's not worth being killed for. So, <laughs> so I thought, you know what, I wanted to take a break. And that project that I wanted to do, it wasn't just like a spur of the moment. When I was living in San Francisco, one time I was searching on Google Maps to Lebanon. I wanted to look to my Lebanon because I was always kind of like checking what it's like. Street view was a new thing at the time. Instead of taking me to uh, my Lebanon, Google Maps gave me Lebanon, Oregon. Lebanon, Oregon is this one up there. So that was my first time. It's like, there's another Lebanon? Why would there be another Lebanon? I kept searching. It gave me more and more Lebanons. So I thought, OK, let me see how many there are. Luckily, the US keeps a database, which is open to everyone, about all the town names everywhere. So I just downloaded it and looked for town's called Lebanon. It turned out there's 47 of them. So I thought maybe when I retire, I'll do this road trip. But when that happened with Baghdad, I said, you know what, life's too short. I want to do it now. So I just quit my job, flew to the US, and went on the trip. I just wanted to find out why these places are called Lebanon. Does it have any relationship to our Lebanon? Are there Lebanese people in it? So that's what I did. So. The good thing, well, the bad thing, I guess, is that when you quit your job, you don't have any more income, right? And at the time when I wanted to do the trip, I had saved enough money for me to do the trip, but I had to be extremely economical on my trip. Like, I would be draining my savings account. At that point, I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't care. I'll, I'll drain it, but you have to be economical. So how did I do my trip? I did my trip with this. So that's me, and in US English, this is called an RV. So uh, I don't know in other Englishes, maybe it's called a caravan, a van, something. So this is the RV that I traveled in. Why did I do that? Because I didn't have to stay in a hotel. This is where I slept for five months. I was on the road from October to March. This was on the inside. That was my bed. That's the couch, and that's where I drove. I had a small kitchen. I 
also had a small shower and a bathroom, which I will not show you. Because it's like, why would you? <laughs> and this is where I used to sit inside the car to do, like this was my map. And this is where I planned to go route from one place to the next. And where did I sleep? I slept in parking lots of Walmart. Walmart is a chain of supermarkets for those of you who don't know. So every single night, well, almost every single night, I slept at Walmart. You know? <laughs> On the downside, you're sleeping, you know, in a parking lot. On the plus side, you get neighbors like these. <laughs> so for the first uh, couple of weeks when you drive, I was driving alone and I didn't really see any people. Because when I, when I was driving from San Francisco, once you hit east, you go through these small towns. So all I was seeing was, you know, just roads, empty roads and empty towns and all that. I just made that small, I say, flip. Just for me, it was like that. This is how it was the first few weeks. Oh, there's no voice. It's not playing. Let's skip it. That's okay. No, hello, it's not playing. It's okay. It's fine. No, no, it's fine. I have test. I don't know which one. Okay. Uh, I'll have to go. It's okay. We'll skip the small video. So, what is this map? This map, we're not talking roads. We're talking, these are all the Lebanons. They were like all the Lebanons in the US, this is their location. They're different colors because there's cities, there's towns, there's villages and all that. However, the most important ones that I found out was the ones that are starred. Why are they starred? Because while I was doing my research before going on this trip, I found out something really important. One is that obviously I'm not the first one to, to know that there are so many Lebanons in the US. Who was the first person to know it was President Kamil Shamoun. That was in 1955. What did he do? He found he knew about these people. He knew about these towns. So he invited all the mayors of the towns called Lebanon to come from the U.S. to Beirut, to our Lebanon. Of the people who he invited in 1955, seven were able to come. Okay, so these seven, there were the Lebanons from Indiana, Ohio, Oregon, Missouri, New Hampshire, Nebraska, and Tennessee. When they came to Lebanon, they came and spent two weeks in 1955. And these are these people. They were the mayors. Well, the quality of the photos sometimes are not that good because I took them from newspapers. Well, this one's the good one. Anyway, of, of these mayors, the seven ones, the seven mayors, and the one in the fourth from the right is the U.S. ambassador back in the time, Donald He. Of these seven, if you'll notice, the first one on the left, it's not noticeable, it's called, his name is George Fawaz. 
And the fourth on the left, his name is Frank Badur. As it happened, these mayors of the towns that are called Lebanon were Lebanese Americans themselves. So of these people, when they spent two weeks in Lebanon, why is this important to me? Because after they spent two weeks in Beirut, First Lady Zalfa Shamoun gave each of them a sapling of a cedar tree from our cedars. And these seven people took these cedars, took them back to their hometown, and they planted them there. So we're talking about they planted cedar trees in 1955. So in 2016, that means each tree would have been 61 years old. Yes, 61 years old. So I wanted to find out, going on that trip, where these cedar trees are and if I could, if I would be able to find them. So that was the first objective of my trip. One, find these trees. And two, we'll, we'll get to that later. So the first Lebanon I went to was Lebanon, Oregon. By the way, they don't call it Lebanon. Anytime you go to any of these US Lebanons and you say Lebanon, I'm exaggerating the O here, they would know that you are not from them, from there, because they call it Lebanon. Lebanon. Yeah, it's spelled the same way, but just they, they talk like that, so it's called Lebanon, right? And in places in the South, it's just two syllables, Lebanon. So I went to Lebanon, Oregon, and I looked and looked for the cedar tree, right? And we found the cedar tree, and they showed me this. Wait, to them, that was the cedar tree. But I looked at it, and this is not a cedar tree. But this is what they planted. So I thought there must have been a mistake. I thought, but I didn't tell them. It's like, okay, this is the cedar tree. But, but this is the thing, in the US, what I, when you say cedar, there's a million species of cedar. There's one cedar of Lebanon, which is in Latin, this, it's called the taxonomy, it's called Cedrus Libani, right? But in the US, they have these trees, like for, the, for example, this is a juniper tree, a, Virgi a Virginia juniper, Juniperus virginiana, but they call it red cedar. So, I think, but this couldn't have been a mistake. Zalfa Shamoun gave them actual cedars from here. Where did, I thought, okay, maybe this is just a mistake. So I just passed it. I continued driving and got to Lebanon, South Dakota. Lebanon, South Dakota, they welcome you with a sign that says, home of South Dakota's first outdoor swimming pool. That's what they're famous for, and they're proud that they have the first outdoor swimming pool. When I was doing my research, by the way, I went into a lot of museums, a lot of libraries, just to, I want to know, it's like, because 60 years have, have, has passed, you know? It's like, you can't do research by asking people because most of the people who were alive back then are dead now. So I had to look to, in newspapers. I walk into a museum and I see a woman called Mary Carol Potts. Now, mind you, in Lebanon, it's a, in this Lebanon, it's very common to see someone and to ask them, it's like, where are you from, right? In the US in these days, it's kind of a question that you do not ask people. It's kind of considered kind of politically incorrect. So when I walked in and she said, not just where were you from, which country are you from? So when I walked in, she asked me, which country are you from? So for me, it's like, why did she ask me that? And I said, but I mean, of, of course I'm gonna tell her. So I said, Lebanon. She said, yeah, I thought you might be because I'm originally from Lebanon. That was just like, so I, she originally she's Lebanese, but she's third generation Lebanese. She does not speak a single word of Arabic. Instead, the, she, to prove to me, or she wanted to say, it's like, oh, this is me being Lebanese. She brought the papers of her grandparents who emigrated to the US in the 1890s. That's how old. So she brought me the birth certificates of her, grand, uh, her grandmother's called Warda, and her, her, uh, her grandfather's called George Asaf. So Asaf, they changed it into the US to Asif. She only knows the few words in Arabic, which is Laban, Be'lewa, you know, it's like these say. <laughs> of course, it's like, why do you people in the US call it baklava? She was telling me that. It's like, well, it's in English. It's like, no, we call it Be'lewa. It's like, okay, Be'lewa, baklava, it's the same thing. Anyway, I go, uh, I go to Lebanon, South Dakota, and I go into a bar, 
And in this bar, I see this woman, and she's the barmaid there, right? <laughs> Let's not laugh at her. <laughs> but here's the thing. She's the barmaid there. There are three women who run the bar there. It's called the Long Branch Bar in Lemon, South Dakota. She's in her 70s. Her grandfather built Mount Rushmore along with other people. Mount Rushmore is that mountain in the US where you have the face of the poor president. Anyway, I walk in and she tells me she had never seen anyone from, she had never seen a foreigner in her life. Here, here's the thing, she starts talking to me about Lebanon, South Dakota. You know how many people live in Lebanon, South Dakota? 36. That's the whole town. 36 people. So you can imagine they haven't seen anyone. So when she found out that I'm a foreigner, I told, I told her, yes, I'm from Lebanon. Her eyes lit up. It's like, you're from Lebanon? You need to cross the street and see what's there. I was like, okay, I'll cross the street. I cross the street and I see this. If you, re if you go closer to the sign, it says, Cedar of Lebanon, given to Lebanon, South Dakota by the country of Lebanon. However, again, this is not a cedar. So for now, like I'm starting to get suspicious. It's like, where are the cedars? <laughs> but they were so nice to me. The people, it's like on the third day, I walk into a bar. The whole town has 36 people. The bar has 34 people in it because there are two kids who are not allowed into the bar. <laughs> so it's, it, and they haven't met anyone from outside the country and they were so welcoming. To me, it was very moving. You know, it's like, that, I mean, they don't know me, but during these days, I don't think I paid for a single meal or a single drink because they refused to allow me to pay. It was, well, well I have to say, I. Living in the U.S., I lived in San Francisco, and when I used to work in finance, I used to go to New York a lot. Knowing San Francisco and New York, this is not the U.S. This is part of the U.S., but there are multiple places in the U.S. Like in cities on the West Coast and the East Coast, it's, it's like cities everywhere. But once you go inside, it felt like I'm in a mountain village in Lebanon the place where you go and you say hello and they insist they want to take you to have you drink coffee with them, that's how people were over there. Anyway, we see the Seer of Lebanon, and I was telling you that the town is too small. This is the, the storm shelter of the town. Everyone fits in it, all the town. And that, that's how, that's how the, the bar looks on the inside. Here, I would have loved to, to play you that video, but it's, the sound is not working, so it's all right. One time I walk in, that's the second lady uh, at the barmaid. She's also in her 70s. And they decided to play a mini concert to me. I was the only one there. <laughs> and they play country music. And it was just, it was just fantastic. Let me just test it one more time. No, it's OK. Well, it's, uh, I'll, I'll play it after that. After going to Lebanon, South Dakota, I moved to Lebanon, Nebraska. If you see, it says population 70. Unfortunately, that was not the truth because that's the theoretical population. The actual population is 40. Like, can you imagine these small towns? And something to remind me of my Lebanon is when I saw this at the Lebanon, South Dakota, <laughs> at the Lebanon, Nebraska, the Lebanon Gun Club. <laughs> this town was almost deserted, by the way. I walk in, this was their church. It's just empty. There are no people there. This is how it looks. Look, look at this scene. Do you, I don't think you would see anything like that anywhere. Like, this is a phone. And it's not, not even a pay phone. This is a free phone for any, anyone, you know? I come in. And it's such a small town there that let's say you have a phone number, right? The phone number would have like 10 digits. They only use the last four because there's not a lot of people. Like no one cares about the first seven, you know, the first six. This is how, how deserted the town is. So, but... I wanted to meet someone. Thankfully, I was on uh, social media a lot, 
So I was updating like where I am. So a woman contacts me and she said, you're in my town, I want you to meet my mother. So, let me, let, okay, this is her mother. Her name is Mrs. Virginia Grafton. Why I wanted to meet her. Remember I told you that seven people came from the US to Lebanon, spent two weeks and then left? Well, in reality, six of them left. One person stayed behind, his name was Charles Harris. Instead of going back to the US, he decided to go visit the Holy Land. So he went to Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, he was killed. He was not the mayor of Lebanon, Nebraska. He was sent on behalf of the mayor. He was only 23 years old, and he was an agricult uh, agronomy, agriculture major. He was the one who was supposed to take the saplings and take care of them in the US before distributing them to, to everyone else. So, I wanted to know his story, and Mrs. Grafton was a colleague, a classmate of his sister. So I wanted to talk to her. I wanted to see, because to them, did they get the tree since he was killed? Do people hate that tree because it's associated with the guy who came to Lebanon and you know, went to Jerusalem and died? Anyway, Mrs. Grafton took me with Sophie, that's her dog, Sophie, and she showed me the tree. That's the tree. Again, not a cedar. That's the exact same thing. It's a juniper tree. This is, Mr. Uh, this is Charles Harris, and this is the obituary when they put it in the newspaper. This would be a long story for me to explain, but there were actually a lot of rumors, and it's in a book that is his killing was not exactly accidental, but it was on purpose and there might be CIA issues involved, but I will leave that and I will give you a link later on if you wanna read the whole story. In any case, we went, to, we went to see the tree and Mrs. Grafton told me that they, even though Charles Harris died, they were actually so happy with the tree that they considered it the town Christmas tree every year. They decorated it, but Unfortunately, and this was just a month ago, someone sent me this photo. There was a storm that broke the tree. It felt like this town, their tree is like, I don't know, cursed. You know, like the guy died and then the tree died. Anyway, on the, this, is the, the, this is the negative aspect. The positive aspect of it is, I'm gonna take them a new tree. So this is, I'll tell you about it later. Anyway, we continued. We went to Lebanon, Kansas. Why is Lebanon, Kansas famous? Not because it's called Lebanon. It's famous because it's the center of the USA. What does that mean? If you take a map of the USA, but never mind Alaska or Hawaii, like the lower 48, and you put a pin, like if you want to balance it, that's called the center. The center of the US is a town called Lebanon, Kansas. Any they, like if you go there, welcome to Lebanon, center of the United States. They even have, their book is called A Century at the Center. This town is so amazing to me because when they built it in the 1800s, they built a town called Lebanon, right? And then in the 1800s, they were building, what do you call it, like uh, train, train lines. Initially, the train had to pass through town, but it missed them by like two miles. So what did they do? they lifted the whole buildings and they moved them to where the train is, from the foundation. Like houses used to be, you know, like it's not like here, concrete, we're talking wood. So they lifted all the buildings and moved them two miles to where it is now. And the other place they call it Old Lebanon now. So in 1940, they got this privilege of being called the center of the United States and they're so proud of it. They even wrote a poem about it, and if it's not for the US, it could apply to our Lebanon, if it's not for the last sentence. It says, God gave Kansas scenic beauty, friendly folk who pioneered, made their homes in crude sod houses, here their sturdy families reared. Heat and dust, tornadoes, windstorms, droughts and hail all take their toll, but the people's faith rekindles, zealous pride refires the soul. 
Lebanon is not large in numbers, is not great as just today, but it has a lasting greatness, center of the USA. The town has 200 people. So by, compared to the other one, it's a huge city. You know, it's like 200 people. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to go see that center of the US. Like you, you go travel on that road, and here I had the weirdest coincidence. Well, not weirdest, it's a really good coincidence. They have this, you know, uh, like a landmark that says center of the US, and they have a glass sign, what do you call it, like a board with, with glass, and they have information on it. So I'm walking, and I go to the glass, and I see this, okay? If you can't see what's in the bottom left of the screen, this is it. The, to me, it's like, I, it's like this is the, you know, the center of the US. Where did Mashabil come from? <laughs> you know, it was, it, it was, yeah, it was. Uh, how to say? It was a good coincidence. It's like, anyway, it turned out that there's two people called Nick and Maggie Azar who came in the '90s, visited Lebanon with Lebanese senators, and they gave them a souvenir from Charri with the Marsharbil in it. Right? It took me a long time to actually find them. I had to do a lot of, you know. It turned out they were from Boston but they don't remember anything why they brought the souvenir to, to them. Last from Lebanon, Kansas, I'll talk to you about this lady. This lady is called Gladys Kennedy. She's 100 years old. Well, she was 99 when I met her, but now she's 100. You know, she's born in 1917. Uh, I talked a little bit about how nice the people are in these towns. This woman, she wrote the book that's called A Century at the Center. Until she could no longer use her fingers, she used to give every child in the town a quilt, like a, how to say, like a blanket that she would make herself as a Christmas present. Now that she can't do that anymore, she does jams and pickles and sells them for the church. So she was telling me about why she loves her town, Lebanon, is that there's a sense of community. In the 1930s, they had something called the Dust Bowl over there, where, you know, like winds, the soil, they couldn't, how to say, they had like windstorms that filled with dust. People lost all their belongings because farmers couldn't do farming anymore. People helped each other out. Everyone built the other person's home. So this was to them, more important that they are the center of the U.S. That I have five minutes left. That's important. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll move quickly. I went to Lebanon, Indiana. I could not find the tree. Okay, but they did an interview with me in a newspaper and. Then the second day, I go to Starbucks, and I found myself on the cover. So just like, <laughs> we, I go, I go to Lebanon, Tennessee. Lebanon, Tennessee is in the south of the U.S. I thought the south would be warm. It was minus 18 degrees Celsius. So, why did I go to Lebanon, Tennessee? Because they had the vice mayor who's originally Lebanese, is called Frank Badur. Also did not find the tree, but this is where he was buried. You know, I also did not find the tree, but what's interesting is, in 1955, they wanted to do the flag of the city, and they took the flag of the city from our flag, and they had this. This was the flag of Lebanon, Tennessee, until 1994. In addition, they had, look at what they have. Welcome to Cedars of Lebanon State Park. The funny thing, it does not have a single cedar of Lebanon. <laughs> also, so again, no tree. Finally, I go to Lebanon, Ohio. This is Lebanon, Ohio. And I find the tree. By the way, this is an actual cedar. But it's such in poor shape because they had to move it in a lot. So this was an actual cedar. So this is where I had to ask the question. Where are the actual cedars? Why the other ones don't have? As it turns out, when, the, the, when they brought the cedars to the US, they had to be fumigated, which means to kill every parasite and all that. 
Out of all the trees, only one survived. And because the nursery was in Ohio, they kept it and they sent fake cedars to the other one just so they wouldn't have to tell them that they all died. So they were being nice, you know? <laughs> but anyway, quickly, moving to Missouri. This is Lebanon, Missouri. I also did not find a tree. However, what was the best thing was that the daughter of the mayor who was here contacted me out of nowhere to tell me that her dad kept all the souvenirs that he had from Lebanon in 1955. So she sent me pictures. These are all from 1955. This was the Beirut guidebook in 1955. This was her dad in Harissa. This is at the National Museum. And this is them giving, this is them giving uh, Mrs. Zalfa Shamoun a gift. This was the first lady at the time. And they were made honorary uh, citizens of the town of Bikfaya. And these were the medals that they were given. One last thing, uh, uh, there's one Lebanon to talk about before. So these are all the seven Lebanons, we know where the cedars are. However, back when I, was, when I passed in Boston, I was called by national radio over there to do an interview. So I did an interview, and at the time I looked a little bit like a terrorist, but that was, <laughs> uh, why am I showing you this? Because this aired, broadcasted in the US. After that, I was called by another guy from St. Louis saying that he was called by a guy from Lebanon, Illinois. And the guy sent him this letter. Who types letters like that anymore? This was not like, you know, this was typed on a typewriter. He said, listening today to your station, I caught part of an interview with what I take to be a native Lebanese. Fadi, he spelled my name wrong, but I mean, for listening to it on the radio, that was a good thing. Anyway, he's telling me that he had, there's Lebanon in, over there, that there's a cedar over there. So I go to Lebanon, Illinois, and I meet the guy. Obviously, that's him. That's Harry Church. He owned the paper over there, and he's the town historian. He said, we have an actual cedar tree. I said, really? He said, yeah, look. He brings me a paper from 1967. A guy is called Asad Muqaddim. He, in 1967, so it has nothing to do with the 1955 trip. He comes to visit Lebanon, Illinois, and he brings a tree with them to, to plant it. So these are the photos planting the tree from back then. And these are Lebanese students there. They even declared April 1st as Cedars of Lebanon Day. Unfortunately, it's April Fool's Day, but that's what it is. They even include, look, it's their history in a nutshell, 1967, the Cedar of Lebanon Day. I go to find the tree, and here it is, and this is an actual tree, but they prune it differently, but this is an actual tree. And beneath it, there's a plaque that says, Cedar of Lebanon, planted by the Lebanon Beautification Committee, and dedicated by Assad Muqaddim, representing the Embassy of Lebanon, as a project of international goodwill and understanding between the country of Lebanon and our city of Lebanon. So what follows next is probably the best thing that ever happened to me in my life. Why? Because I go and meet the mayor of Lebanon, Illinois. They haven't seen any Lebanese person since 1967. So for him, he wanted to honor me. So he gave me the key to the city. So look at that. This is the key to the city of Lebanon. So right now I have a brass key to the city of Lebanon. To me, I don't think I've had anything better than that in my life. And of course, the next day was, it was in the paper. I'll, 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 I'll I want it, okay, I'll, I'll drop it here. Okay. <laughs> Can we have a few questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we have time for two questions. Well, I, hi. <laughs> I just want to know, what do you do with all the material you got together from all your trip? Do you do something with that? Like, I don't yeah. know, you publish it or? Uh, oh, that we'll, works. We'll ask the second question. And okay, then okay. Second question. 
Um, so are there any current initiatives to bring back maybe the mayors, it, I mean, as a like, nice gesture to bring back those mayors of Lebanon in the U.S. to Lebanon? And okay. For, let me answer the first question first. So, uh, yes, there will be a book. Actually, let me go to the last slide. Uh, there will be two books, okay? I'm doing a photo book, and then I'm doing, a, a, how to say, whatever happened with me on that trip, how I was treated by the people. I didn't expect that I was gonna do like a non-photographic book, but so many things happened with me that for me, it's worthy to actually do, you know, a book about it. Um, the second question. Yes, uh, this is the plan for my second trip. One, all these towns that have the fake cedars, I wanna take them real cedars. You know, it's like enough with the fake stuff. So I wanna bring them cedars of Lebanon. Two, I'm hoping, I mean, I'm gonna contact the, I already contacted the US Embassy and I'm contacting the Foreign Ministry of Lebanon to hopefully plan a trip by these mayors, like do a second one af after that. Okay. Uh, just just to put my entire inf information. If you have other questions, you can uh, chat with uh, Eddie during the coffee break. Now we'll go for the coffee break in the cafeteria, and then we have to hurry back up here for our third conference. Okay, let's go. Thank you. Uh, and you can visit his website as well. What's, what's your website? Uh, wait, uh, fadibukaram.com or lebanonusa.com. That's the... Sure, I would love that. Sure. <laughs> 